Question one. So we've got to write this number here to correct the nearest to thousand. So that would be like two thousand or three thousand or four thousand. And we can see that this number here is nearer to four thousand than it is to three thousand because it's over three thousand five hundred. So our final answer should be four thousand. Question two. So think of this as being one yo-yo, and then you add three yo-yos to that, and then you take away two yo-yos. So three and one is four. Four yo-yos take away two yo-yos is two yo-yos. Question three. So factors are the small whole numbers that when times by another factor would give us 18. So how can we get 18 when we times two numbers together? Well, we can have one times 18, or 2 times 9, or 3 times 6. So that's the way I would think of it if I were you. As a working, do them in pairs. So these six numbers are all the factors. But for your final answer, just list them in numerical order with commas in between. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. Question 4. So this table gives information about the prices of cinema tickets. So adult tickets are this, ch child tickets are this, and a family ticket for four people is this. Mr. Edwards and his three children go to the cinema. It is cheaper for Mr. Edwards to buy one family ticket rather than four separate tickets. How much cheaper? Okay, so let, first of all, let's just go and work out how much it would be if you um, didn't use the family ticket. So if Mr. Edwards and his three children went without using the family ticket, you'd have to buy one adult ticket at £7.80 and then three child tickets at £5.80 each. Well, three lots of £5.80 is £17.40. So add that onto the adult ticket, you get £25.20. And we knew that was always going to be a bit more expensive than buying the family ticket. But how much more expensive? Well, £25.20, take away £24.30. And you can either give your answer in pounds as 0 0.90 pounds, or you could say 90p. Now, for part B, the film starts at 6.45pm and lasts for 102 minutes. What time does the film finish? So, l lots and lots of different ways of doing this. The way I've cho chosen to do it is just to sort of break it down into pieces. So, starting off at 6.45, going to the nearest o'clock, so around to 7 o'clock would be 15 minutes. Then another hour would take me to 8 o'clock, that's another 60 minutes. So how many minutes have I now been watching the film for? That's 15 and 60, which is 75. So 75 minutes by the time it gets to 8 o'clock. Now, I, the film lasts for 102 minutes. So 102 take away 75 means there's another 27 minutes to go from 8 o'clock. So the film finishes at 8.27 p.m. Now, lots and lots of different ways of doing that. You, you do it however however you see fit, but make sure you get... 8.27 p.m. Question 5. So we have a large bottle of shampoo in which there are 2 litres of shampoo and then we're going to empty this into small, um, smaller bottles which are 150 millilitres each. So the first thing to take on board is to that 2 litres is 2,000 millilitres. So basically um, milli means a thousand. So whenever you've got milli, it's a thousand. Basically, it's always a thousand unless it's cent or it's cent, century, a hundred. So really, just try and remember that cent is the one that's a hundred and everything else like milli or kilo is always a thousand. OK, so two litres is 2000 millilitres. And then we get 150 millilitres being poured into each of the smaller bottles. So if we do 2,000 divided by 150 on our calculator, we get 13.3333 uh, bottles being filled up. So how many bottles can be filled completely? Well, that's going to be 13 of these small bottles. Question 6. So we're told that, a tw that 20 cycles were sold on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So how many bicycle wheels have we got Tuesday, Wednesday and th Thursday added together? Well, we've got one, two, three, four holes plus two halves. That's five. So we know that five bicycle wheels is our 20 cycles. 
So just dividing by 5, we can see that each bicycle wheel must represent 4 cycles. So pop that into your key. Now, um, we're told that 8 cycles were sold on Friday. Now remember, 4 cycles for every wheel. So if we've got 2 cycles there, that's uh, 2 wheels, that's 4 and 4, which is our 8 cycles. Now on, fr on Saturday, we need to have 15 cycles. Now each wheel is 4, so that's 4, 8, 12 and then we've got to still do three more cycles so, so that's three quarters of a whole wheel because four cycles is a whole wheel so three cycles must be three quarters of a wheel so that drawing there is supposed to be three quarters of a wheel it should have a, ch a quarter chunk missing from it question seven now we're being asked to show that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Now an isosceles triangle has two angles the same, not three. Or if all three were the same, that would be an equilateral triangle. But we've got to show that this triangle has got two angles the same. So let's go and work out what these two angles here are and see if two out of three are the same. So first things first, we can work out that this angle here from using the fact that the angles on a straight line add up to 180. So this angle here, angle BCA, must be 180 take away 117, which is 63. Now once we've worked out this angle here, we can work out this angle here because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I've worked out this angle here by doing 180 take away 54, take away this 63, giving me another 63. And there we go, we've got two angles which are the same, so it's therefore an isosceles triangle. So writing this out formally, because we've got to give a reason for each stage of, stage of your working, angle BCA, so this angle here is 63, because angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, and then secondly angle BAC, is also 63 degrees because angles in a triangle total 180. Now the base angles are equal, two of the angles are equal and therefore the triangle is an isosceles triangle. Question 8. The picture shows the bus next to a building. The bus has a length of 12 centimeters. They're drawn to scale. Work out an estimate for the height of the um, of the height of the building in meters. So, if I were you, I would do this. Just go and get out your ruler and measure how long the bus is on your ruler. And we can see that's about two centimeters long if you're doing this on proper size paper. Okay, so we're saying that two centimeters represents 12 meters. So, two centimeters uh, in our drawing is 12 meters in real life. So just halving that, we can see that one centimeter in our drawing is six meters in real life. So if we then go and measure the height of the building on our drawing, we get five centimeters. And because one centimeter drawing is six meters real life, five centimeters drawing must be five lots of six, which is 30 meters real life. Now, because this is an estimate, the mark scheme allows us to be, you have varying different answers. So anything between 27 all the way up to 33 was allowed in the mark scheme. Question 9. So we're writing down two different prime numbers. When we add them together, her answer is a square number less than 30. So find two prime numbers which could have been written down. Okay. So remember, prime numbers are any uh, whole numbers that... Um, the only way you can get them when you multiply two numbers together is by one and itself. So for example, two is prime, because the only way you can get two is one times two. Seven is prime, because the only way you can get seven is one times seven. And this is an example of one of the things we could have written down. Because here we've got two prime numbers, we're adding them together, and we're getting nine. Now nine is the square number, because three threes are nine, and nine is less than 30. So the two numbers we could have been thinking of were two and seven. Now there are three other possibilities. It could have been three and 13, five and 11, and two and 23. Each of these are, pr are pairs of prime numbers, which when added together,
give you a square number less than 30. Question 10. So Jim thinks of a number. Two thirds of Jim's number is 48. So work out five sixths of Jim's number. Right now, this is, you've got to really concentrate for this. So two thirds of our number is 48. So what would be one third of our number? Well, one third is going to be half of two thirds. So that's 24. So one third of the number that Jim thinks of is 24. So what number must Jim be thinking of? Well, he must be thinking of the whole number which is three-thirds, three-thirds as a whole. So if we times 24 by three, we get the number that Jim was thinking of, okay? Because two-thirds of 72 is 48. One-third is 24, two-thirds of 48. So the number that Jim was thinking of is 72. Now we're being asked to work out five-sixths of this number. Well, if we divide this by six, we get a sixth of 72 which is 12 so a sixth of Jim's number is 12 but we want five sixths so we've got to multiply this sixth by five five twelfths are 60 so 60 is our answer 60 is five sixths of Jim's number which was 72 question 11 so we're going to have to work through both of these offers and then compare our final answers. So for offer one, the first driving lesson is free, then all the other driving lessons are normal price. Now he's gonna have, Douglas is gonna have 12 driving lessons, so if the first is free, he's gonna have to pay full price for the other 11. So how much do we pay under offer one? Well, one lesson is free, so that's no money but the other 11 lessons are going to be the normal price of £24 each. 11 times 24 is 264 So offer 1 gives us £264. Now, for offer 2, all driving lessons, we get 5% off our normal price. Now, our normal price is £24, so 10% um, off would be a tenth of this, dividing by 10 would be £2.40. 5% would be half of this, which is £1.20. Now, given this is a calculator paper, you could also have worked out 5% by just doing 0 0.05 times 24. But either way, we need to work out that the 5% off is going to be £1.20 off each lesson. So, £1.20 off £24 is £22.80 a lesson. So under offer 2, all 12 lessons are going to be at this discounted price of £22.80 each. 12 lots of £22.80 is £273.60. So comparing offer 1 to offer 2, we can see that offer 1 is cheaper. Question 12. Well, this is just another proportion question. 2.5 kilograms costs £3.60. So let's go back to how much one kilogram would cost. So if we divide by 2.5, so £3.60 divided by 2.5, we see that one kilogram would cost £1.44. So 3.5 kilograms is going to cost 3.5 lots of £1.44, which is £5.4p. Question 13. So we've got to complete the table where y equals half whatever x is and then take away 1. So let's just work through this uh, using our calculator. So let's start with this one. So we've got to do half of x being minus 1. Half of minus 1 is minus a half. Minus 1 from this and we get minus 1.5. Moving on to when x is 0, substitute 0 into the uh, formula. Half of 0 is 0, 0 take away 1 is minus 1. Now when x is 1, half of 1 is a half, half take away 1 is minus a half. And then when x is 3, half of 3 is 1 and a half, 1 and a half take away 1 is a half. 
So we then go and plot these points for part B. So we're plotting the coordinates minus 2, minus 2. So that's 2 along the corridor to the left, 2 down the stairs. Minus 1, minus 1 and a half. So that's minus 1 to the left and then down the stairs minus 1 and a half and so on. Now, because we've got no squares involved in the formula, you need to be looking out for a straight line. So if all your points are not lying on a straight line, you need to go back and have a look and see where you've gone wrong in the table and go and adjust the answers in your table. Okay? So that's our line for part B. Now for part C, we're being asked to use our graph to find the value of x when y is 0 0.3. So find where y is 0 0.3, which is here, 3 squares up. Go along with the ruler, hit your line, go down and take a reading, and we get 2.6. So question 14. We've got to describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. Now, there's two marks going for this, so we need to be looking to make two points. So hopefully you can see this is a reflection and then we've just got to decide where would our mirror line be and our mirror line would be along this x-axis. So we need to say that this is a reflection in the x-axis. Question 15. So we're told the ratio of the cost of one meter of cotton fabric to the cost of one meter of silk fabric is 2 to 5, complete the table of costs. So basically, every 2 here, we've got to have 5 here. Okay? Now, um, so really, we've just got to maintain this relationship that if this is 2, this is 5. Now, I think the easiest way to do this is to go back and find out what um, 1 meter would be. Okay? So, um, hang on, just before that, sorry, before that, we've just got to work out when. Um, for two meters. So for two meters, okay, we're told for two meters the cotton fabric is six pounds. Six pounds, okay, two meters is six pounds. Now the relationship has got to be two to five, two to five. So if we've got six pounds here, how are we going to work out what we've got here? We're going to have to maintain this relationship of two to five. Now how did we get from two to six pounds? We multiplied by 3, so this has also got to be multiplied by 3. Okay, so what we're saying is that this is 6 when this is 15, um, and basically what we're just saying is this is 3 lots of the 2 and this is 3 lots of the 5. So the first thing we've really got to do is make sure we're comfortable with this 15 pounds here. Now, there's lots of ways of filling in these other bits, we just need to maintain the ratio. So, you could decide that for 6 metres, that's just 3 lots of 2 metres, and triple each of these. Similarly, with the 8 metres, you could see that that's um, 4 lots of 2 metres, so you could have times these both by 4. Or, you could have gone and seen that 8 metres is 2 metres plus 6, so you could have said 6 plus 18, and 15 plus 45 and so on. So a number of ways of working it out for 6 metres and 8 metres. Now 9 metres is a bit trickier. So what I would suggest you do is go back and work out what 1 metre is. So halving the 2 metres gives us £3 and £7.50 and that then makes it easy to work out the 9 metres because you just do 9 lots of each of these. Also, if you've made the decision to go back and work out what 1 metre is then to work out 6 metres, you would just times each of these by 6 metres, you would just times each of these by 8. So lots of times people always find it easiest just to go back and work out what 1 metre is and then feel it, fill in the table from there going forwards. So lots and lots of different ways of doing this. You've just got to maintain the ratios and the proportions. Question 16. So, we're going to be popping lots of these boxes into the van, and these are the dimensions of the van. So, first things first, as the box is working in centimetres, I'm going to turn each of these van measurements into centimetres. 
And remember, cent means 100, so we've got to multiply each of these by 100 to turn it into centimetres. So the van has got a length of 240 centimetres, a width of 150, and a height of 140. So we've really got to do it dimension by dimension now. So just picture putting these boxes, say they're shoe boxes, into a car. Okay, Each of the boxes has got a length of 40 centimetres. Now if the van is 240 centimetres long, if we do 240 divided by 40, we can see that we could fit six boxes in for the length. Similarly with the width, the width of the car, the width of the van is 150, the width of each box is 30, 150 divided by 30 is 5, so we could fit five boxes in width-wise. And then the height of the van okay, is 140, the height of each box is 35, so 140 divided by 35 would be four boxes going upwards. So in the van we can fit six boxes length by five width by four height. So if we multiply these three together we can see that we could fit 120 boxes into the van. Now we're told that we can fit three boxes into the van in one minute. So how many minutes is it going to take us to fit 120 boxes? Well, 120 divided by 3 is 40 minutes. Now, for part B, we're told the space for the boxes might not be in the shape of a cuboid. It might not be rectangular. Explain how this could affect the time it would take Chloe to put as many box, uh, boxes as possible in the van. Now, it could take less time as we would be able to fit fewer boxes in. Okay, it could take less time. But equally, it could take more time if you spent ages trying to plan how you could fit as many boxes in as you could. So really, for part B, either answer is fine as le unless you justify it. Question 17. Now, factorize means putting the brackets in. Now, what's the highest factor of 4 and 12? What's the highest number that goes into both 4 and 12? Well, that's 4. So 4 comes outside the bracket. So open up your bracket. Then think of the opposite process. Think of the expanding. 4 times what would give us 4m? Well, that needs to be m. Then get the sign right. It's a plus. And then think of the second claw. 4 times what would give you 12? And that's 3. So th this is... the when you factorized 4m plus 12 but when you expand 4 bracket m plus 3 close bracket you get 4m plus 12. Now for part b choose two words from the box above to make this statement correct. Now if we just use this as an example 4m or 12 are terms okay so 5y is a term in the what. Now, because this doesn't equals anything, it's called an expression. Okay? So this is an expression. If this went on to say equals 3, for example, so it's got an equals involved, it's then called an equation. See, so look, I've, you've nearly got the word equals in there. Okay? So it's an expression when there is no equal sign and it is an equation when there is an equal sign. Expressions can't be solved, they can just be simplified. Equations can be solved. So 5y is a term in the expression 3x plus 5y. Question 18. So, I think the easiest thing to do when you've got one of these is just really turn the patterns into numbers. So, this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term. One, two, three. How many um, counters have I got here? I've got four. How many counters have I got here? I've got seven. And how many counters have I got here? I've got ten. So, looking at the pattern, we can see that we're going up in threes. Now, to create the nth term expression, and I think you should just learn this, we see how much we're going up in, and that's 3, so we write 3n. But then we have to do this a little adjustment. And now this adjustment is what we call the zeroth term. So imagine these are three numbers lining up in a queue. 
He's first in the queue, he's second in the queue, he's the third in the queue. And somebody went and pushed to the front of the queue. So they went in front of the first term. What number would they have to be? Well, we can see that if we read these right to left, we're going down in threes. So to get to the one, we've got to take away three, which gives us four take away three is plus one. So our nth term expression is 3n plus 1. Now, Bayo has 90 counters. Can Bayo make a pattern in the sequence using all 90 of his counters? You must show how you get your answer. Now, if we were able to continue the sequence and at some point use 90 counters, then 3n plus 1 at some point would exactly equal 90, and n being a, a specific place in the uh, sequence it is a specific term okay so we need to go and solve 3n plus 1 equaling 90 and if n turns out to be a whole number then yes it, you could make a pattern but if n is not a whole number then you can't make a pattern so just solving this equation if we take away one from from both sides we get 3n equally 89 if we divide by 3 we get n being 29.6 dot 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 so n is not a whole number so no you cannot make a pattern in this sequence using all 90 of the counters question 19 find the class interval that contains the median now if we've got 80 children the middle child is halfway along these 80 children so half 80 and we get 40 so we've got to find our 40th child. Now here's four of them, here's another 11, here's 24, and here's 22. Where's our 40th child? So they're not in there, because they're our first four. If we add these two together, four and 11 is 15. Have we got to our 40th child yet? No, we haven't, keep going. So take your 11 and add on 24. Have we now got to our 40th child? No, we haven't, we've got to our 39th child. So our 40th child is the first child in the next 22. So our middle child is in here. So what is their height? The, the, so the height of the 40th child who's inside these 22 children is here. So their height is greater than 160 but less than equal to 170. So you have to write this down. Now draw a frequency polygon for this information in this table. Now for a frequency polygon, you always plot the midpoint and the frequency. So we have to find the midpoint between 130 and 140, and 140 and 150 and so on. So if you, you might just be able to see what the halfway points are. That's great, write them down. If not, then just find the average. So add the two numbers together and halve them. 130 add 140 would be 270, half of 270 is 135, and so on. So the coordinates I'm going to plot are 135 and 4, 145, 11, 155, 24, and so on. So here are my five points that I plot, that I plotted, and then join those together with a ruler. Question 20. So we've got to compare London to New York. So what I like to do is just to take one of the facts and keep it as it is. So I'm just going to stick within London, one litre costs 108.9 pennies. And then I'm going to do all my work on New York and turn it into litres and pennies so I can properly compare. So what do we know about New York? We know that one gallon is $2.83. So that's my starting point. Now, what I also know is one gallon is the same thing as 3.785 3 litres. So one gallon is 3.785 litres, so that also costs um, $2.83. Now, if I now go and divide this by 3.785, that tells me how much one litre is in dollars. So dividing 2.83 by 3.785, I get one litre being 0.747 dollars. Now I now want to convert from dollars to pounds, so I've got to get it smaller, so I'm going to divide by 1.46. So dividing 0.747 by 1.46, I get one litre being 0.512 pounds, or 
multiplying by 100, 51.2p pennies. So one litre costs 51.2p in New York, but one litre costs 108.9p in London. So we can see that petrol is better value in New York. Question 21. So, density equals mass over volume, so we really need to rearrange this to make V the subject. So, multiplying by V, we get V times D equals M, and then dividing by D, we get V equals M over D. So, this is the formula that I'm going to use. Now, the next catch is that we've got to pick up that we're dealing with different units here. We've got kilograms here and grams here. So let's convert everything to grams. So to, co to convert kilo to grams, we have to multiply by a thousand. Remember, a thousand is kilo or milli, and cent is the hundred one. So 12.5 multiplied by a thousand gives us 12,500 grams. So we're now comparing like with like. We've got grams in both parts. So our, v our v um, volume is mass divided by density. So it's 12,500 divided by 19.3, which is 647.66, dot, dot, dot. So to three significant figures, which just means three digits in total, that's 648, because that's seven rounds up, because that six is five or above. Question 22. So, we've got blue and green and red pens. So, we're told the ratio of blue to green is 2 to 5. So, I've just popped that here. But green to red is 4 to 1, which I've popped down here. Now, we really want to make these greens the same amount so that we can compare all three. So, if I choose to multiply this ratio by 4 and this ratio by 5, it turns my greens into 20s, so I can then compare it across all three. So multiplying this first one both by 4, the ratio 2 to 5 is the same as 8 to 20, blue to green. And then multiplying the green to red ratio by 5, I get that ratio being 20 to 5. So I've got the ratio 80 to 20 to 5, which is works across all three. Now I'm told that there are less than a hundred pens in the box in total what is the greatest possible number of red pens in the box so this my starting ratio is 8 to 20 to 5 adding those up that gives me 33 pens now I've got to have less than 900 so I can see that if I choose to multiply this by 3 I get um, the ratio between 99 pens because 33 times 3 is 99. So multiplying each of these by 3, I get 24 to 60 to 15. So I can see the greatest possible number of red pens in the box is 15. Question 23. So the reciprocal of any number is just 1 divided by that number. So if you pop into your calculator 1 divided by 1.6, you'll see you get 5 over 8. Pressing the SD button on your calculator, you get 0 0.625. Now, just round the number x to one decimal place, the result is 9.8. Write down the error interval for x. Now, this just really means upper and lower bounds. So what's the biggest number that would round down to 9.8 and the smallest number that would round up to 9.8? And that's going to be 9.75 and 9.85. Okay, 9.75 exactly rounds up to 9.8, so make sure you include the equals. Now, 9.85 would actually round up to 10, as uh, uh, to sorry to 9.9. .9. So make sure you make that less than 9.85 to um, take on board the fact that 9.85 itself rounds up. Question 24. Now we're told here that the length of the rectangle is 7 centimeters longer than the width. So let's choose to make the smaller length, the width x. So our length is going to be x plus 7. Now if we then go around all these different um, 
rectangles writing this information in we've got an x an x plus 7 and an x now given that that length there must be x that length there must be a 7 there's an x plus 7 and an x there's an x plus 7 and an x there's an x plus 7 and an x and that length there is another one that given that that bit there is x that bit there must be 7 so those are all the various lengths as you run around that shape now we're told the perimeter of the shape is 70 so as you run around this shape the total length is 70 so if we start here and we've got x plus x plus 7 plus x plus 7 plus x plus 7 plus x plus x plus 7 plus x plus 7 plus x plus 7 when we gather all that together we get 8 x's here we go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and we get uh, 42 could we get 7 7 7 7 7 and 7 so 8x plus 42 has to equal our 70 and we've now constructed an equation which we can solve so we take away 42 from both sides divide by 8 and we get x being 3.5 so back up to where we started we've now worked out that x is 3.5 so x plus 7 must be 10.5 so the area of this rectangle is 3.5 times 10.5 which is 36.75 now this shape here comprises four of these rectangles so the total area of this shape must be four lots of 36.75 which is 147 question 25 so just pop this straight into your calculator making sure that you use that times 10 to the x button which is right down at the bottom in the middle now if you do that it gives us our answer in standard form which is 7.452 times 10 to the minus 4 so we need to translate that into an ordinary number so given it's a minus we know it's going to be a small number so pop in lots of noughts to the left and then we need to bunny hop that decimal point four hops so 1, 2, 3, 4, giving us a final answer of 0 0.000752. And a little check, because your calculator converts it the other way. If you go and pop this number into your calculator and press equals, it will give you 7.452 times 10 to the minus 4. Question 26. So, whose result would give the best estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up? Well, the idea here is the more experiments the do, you do, the more tests you do, the better. So, if we add up the number of goes that Lucy had, Mel had, and Tom had, we can see that Mel's had the most go, so her results will give the best results. Um, because Mel, because he, well, he, um, well, I say it's he, maybe it's a she, uh, dropped the pins most times. Now, um, Stuart is going to drop the pin, drawing pin twice, use all the results in the table to work out it's an estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up the first time and point down the second time. Now, first things first, we've got to take on board the fact that it says all the results in the table. So it's not just Mel's results it's all the results so let's go and add up all the results so points down if we add those up Lucy's Mel's and Tom's add those three we get a hundred add the points up 14 27 and 9 we get 50 so that's a total of 150 throws 100 points points down 50 points up so just simplifying this ratio we get 2 to 1 out of a total of three so just using this information what's the probability that it lands point down it's two out of three or 100 over 150 which simplifies to two out of three what's the probability it lands points up that's one out of three or 50 divided by 150 which simplifies to one over three so this is the information i'm going to use this is the probability that it lands point down this is the point that it lands point up now um, we're saying Stuart is going to drop the drawing pin twice so he needs it to drop up and then down now as it's an and we use the multiplication so up is a third 
and so then times point down two thirds gives us this and you can just pop it into your calculator but it's an easy one just to do in your head multiplying fractions is just top times top and bottom times bottom so that's two over nine question 27 now we need to eliminate one of these variables are there x or y so we need to have the same number of x's or the same number of y's so I'm going to choose to eliminate the x's so I'm going to take my equation 1 and multiply each of the terms by 5 so I also end up with 5x alternatively you could have decided to line up your y's so you could have taken equation 2 and multiplied all the terms by 3 but anyway I've chosen the former so I'm taking equation 1 and multi multiplying each of the three terms by 5 so that gives me 5x plus 15y equals 60 so I'm going to go and compare that to equation 2 5x minus y equals 4 now if I choose to take away this equation from this equation I eliminate my x's 5x take away 5x is 0 and that's what I need to accomplish I need to eliminate either x or y so 5x take away 5x is nothing 15y minus minus y is 15 add y which is 16y 60 minus 4 is 56 so I've got 16y equaling 56 divide both sides by 16 I get y being 3.5 so halfway there I've worked out what y is I now need to work out what x is so go and take any of the equations I'm going to take the first one so I've chosen to use x plus 3y equals 12 now I've just worked out that y is 3.5 so substitute 3.5 into here so x plus 3 lots of 3.5 is 12 well, 3 lots of 3.5 is 10.5, so x plus 10.5 equals 12. Take away 10.5 from both sides and we get x equaling 